Spiritual Life Center. Transforming lives as we love, serve, and remember who we are. One heart. One heart. to be let's sing about it i'm in the right place at the right time i am just where i am meant to be i'm in the right place at the right time i am just where i am meant to be in the right place i'm in the right place at the right time i am just where i am meant to be i'm in the right Well, good morning. Welcome to this week's Stay at Home, Made at Home, and Delivered to Your Home Sunday Celebration Experience by the Spiritual Life Center community. First of all, I'd like to let you know we're very grateful for your presence here this morning. And know wherever you may be, know that despite all of us being in different physical locations, we are always one in the spirit and as part of our sunday celebration service let us practice the the language of spirit in prayer before we do i'd just like to let you know that if you're not aware of it that two of our beloved spiritual life center members have made their transitions within the last couple of weeks and the first one is carl lovis uh, carl passed away on Wednesday, April the 15th. And of course, for those who knew Carl, no matter the circumstances that he faced, he was always positive. He was always a loving and supportive presence. In addition to that, if he was, for those who knew him as a musician, he was a wonderful musician. He was a very, very sharp businessman. And he always looked out for ways to be a positive contribution to other people. Carl will be sorely missed and I'll miss him being up in the first or second row each Sunday. You know the second member is Dr. Gene Reams and he made his transition on April the 5th and in addition to being an outstanding anesthesiologist 
He was a longtime member and as well as a supporter of Spiritual Life Center. He, most importantly, was a gentleman's gentleman. And he was always and always has been remembered for his kind thoughts, his kind actions, and his kind words. And he will always be the person that will be remembered for how he sought to help others as well. So we'll miss both of these magnificent souls. So let's hold them in prayer at this moment. And know that we carry Carl and we carry Dr. Gene in our hearts now. Both of them exemplify the possibilities of the human spirit. And may they both be models of what we can be in our own lives, in our own unique ways and even though they are gone from our sight the consciousness and the legacy of who and what they have been while on this planet will remain with us forever we have been blessed for to have them in our presence and we bless them in their ongoing as they continue on their journey in one of God's magnificent houses that is awaiting both of their spirits. And so it is and so we let it be. Amen. You know, as we make our adjustments to the days to come, we'll live our lives as well as we can and hope that we can live as well as they live theirs. And to remind us of the principles that we believe in, let us affirm our five basic unity principles. God is absolute good and everywhere present. People are inherently good. Thoughts create our experiences. Prayer and meditation are how we connect with God. We must take action. We invite you to join us this Wednesday, April 29th, for our fifth Wednesday WOW program with ceremonial sound practitioner, Renee Jenkins. This intimate virtual gathering of shamanic sounds and vibrational healing will elevate our consciousness and strengthen our connection with Source. Embrace your higher awareness of spirit while old static energy is transmuted with the beautiful sounds of ancient indigenous instruments such as didgeridoo, ritual flutes, whistling water vessels, and more enveloping you in a soundscape from our ancestral past. This pre-recorded program will premiere on YouTube and Facebook at 7 o'clock p.m. Together, look into the mirror.
Spiritual Life Center is a loving, vibrant family that welcomes home all people and accepts everyone, no exceptions. Weaving ancient spiritual traditions with emerging wisdom, we cultivate a spiritual deepening with the divine, each other, and our planet. As we move into this time of inner quiet, focus on your breath. Inhale love. Exhale love. Inhale wholeness. Exhale wholeness. Inhale peace. Exhale peace. As you relax into your breath, allow yourself to drift into a light daydream. Become very aware of your feet. Feel the floor beneath your shoes. Feel the ground beneath the floor. And you are now transported to a place where you can wriggle your bare feet in the clean, soft soil of your Mother Earth. It is cool. It is comforting. You feel grounded. You feel safe. A soft breeze wafts around you, ruffles your hair, Your clothes softly billow as Breeze dances around you. She is playful and soothing, cleansing your mind, cleansing your energies. You feel clean, 
and clear. Water laps at the shore of a crystal clear lake just a few steps away. And you take those steps to wade into the clean, warm water. Wade in all the way up to your waist and gently lower yourself so that you can float on your back. Feel water as she conforms to your body. Feel how she cradles and caresses you. You feel so supported. You feel loved. As you float in water, close your eyes and feel the warmth of Father Son on your face and body. The rays of Father Son penetrate to the very depth of your soul. You feel healed. You feel whole. In this feeling of wholeness now, sink into deep, deep silence. And now take a gentle breath. Stand up in the water and turn your face to the sky. Father sun is setting. Sister moon is rising and the sky is ablaze with all the stars of the universe. The cool fire of the night sky flows into your soul. It ignites your heart. It fills you to your brim. You are one. And you take another breath and turn to return to your body. And as you take another breath, receive this blessing. Oh, my beloved, you are earth and earth is you. You are air and air is you. You are water, water is you. You are fire, fire is you. You are spirit and spirit is you. You are love, you are holy, we are one, we are whole. Remember this always. Where I am, God is, where I stand. God is standing strong where I breathe. God is breathing life in and out and through me as me. Where I sing.
Well, good morning once again. I mentioned last week that I'm reading a book by Anita Mujani. And her book reminded me of something that I had as an experience many years ago is when I went to Ghana. And one of the searing memories from that journey was my visit to the slave castles and the door of no return. Now the door of no return is a portal through which enslaved people pass through when they were ripped from their families. And then they were lowered into small boats and packed like cattle into the larger ships that were sitting further out in the ocean. And they would go through the door of no return. And when they did that, it meant a final goodbye to the freedom they knew and a horrifying journey across the sea. Needless to say for myself and many of the others that I was with at the time, it was an anguishing experience. Emotions ran the gamut of anger, and despair, and sadness, as well as feelings that I could not identify at that moment. It felt as if we could feel the presence and hear the echoes of the screams of the spirits of those human beings who went through the door. It left everyone present, including myself, in stunned, silence. Afterwards, I was invited to the chief's palace, who was the guru of the community. And during my conversation with one of the elders, I shared 
my slave's castle experience. I let him know the emotions we all went through when we faced the door of no return. And the elder chief then gave me a perspective that caused me to view the experience in an entirely new way. He explained that time does not exist. That all of life happens simultaneously. And what that means is that a future life can influence a past life as well as the other way around. Because there's a constant interaction between all lives, our life influences other beings, whether future or past. Consequently, if we do something beneficial in this life, all people are affected. So the elder said to me this, if you live your life with the high positive energy, you will not only set in motion positive energy for future generations, you will renew and replenish past lives. When you send positive energy from the present, your ancestors are freed up as well. And he went on to leave me with this. This is what your ancestors expect from you. As I said, that story, I was reminded of me and triggered in me when I was reading a Anita Moon Johnny's book because she noted when she had her near-death experience she discovered that all points in time past present and future exist simultaneously but in the physical plane we are limited our mind can only see one moment at a time and what we do we string together all of those times but however when we spill out of our bodies we cross over to all time all space and get into pure awareness what she was telling us that our true identity is one of pure consciousness, which is the consciousness of God, which is always whole. It is always complete. Therefore, we don't have to live in anxiety about what comes next. We can recognize the energy that we're already part of, and we can be whole in every aspect of our lives because we're always whole. Always hold regardless of what's going on in our three-dimensional world because we can look at things right now and don't realize that we're whole, but as the topic suggests for today, we always can choose from wholeness. We can choose from wholeness when we realize that we're already whole. When we can release the obstacles, the hindrances, the worries, the fears, and enter consciousness of rejoicing. And in that consciousness, our life is a prayer, a living prayer. And the reason for that, prayers are not something that we do. Prayer is something that we become, is what we are. And prayer, as one definition tells us, is the contemplation of the facts of life from the highest point of view. And when we see ourselves from the highest point of view, we realize that we are wondrously made. That's choosing from wholeness. This was a key in Mujani's healing. She realized that she was already whole. Now, she makes it very clear that even if you don't have a physical healing, a person is still whole. And she realized this. And as a result, she became the greatest cheerleader for herself. She rejoiced in herself as a whole expression of God. And we can do the same. But in order to choose from wholeness in our individual and collective lives, we need to be our greatest cheerleaders for ourselves and affirm that we are wondrously made. And if we think and if we speak and we act from that awareness, we will realize our wholeness regardless of what's going on in the external world. This wholeness is our true identity. It's like the time a person Young man went to the bank to cash a check during the check cashing days. And the teller said, well, can you identify yourself? And he pulled out a small mirror and he looked at it and said, yep, that's me. All right. He was not allowing the external world to identify him. He knew who he was. And in the same way, we do not allow the circumstances going that we're going through right now to determine who we are. We get to determine what our identity is by recognizing that God has already called our name, our nature.
God is saying to you and me, I am the delight of the world. He wants us to say to ourselves, I am the delight of the world brought up before God, before all the creations of the world. That's our identity. And with this awareness, we're holding and beholding the truth. We're praying with a vibration. We're not praying for something. We're praying with something that we already have. As we think about this, as we contemplate this, we can wake up in the morning and as we go on our walk or stay in shelter for our day, we ask ourselves, am I waiting for some kind of good to happen to me? Or am I saying that what I need to do is realize I'm already carrying this wholeness and magnificence within me? Are we asking, am I allowing the external world to identify me, to create a lower octave in my attention where disease and disharmony can ferment and manifest? Understand that you choose your destiny. And we want to choose from wholeness today. There's a statement that says, whenever God is whole, wherever God is, the whole of God must be. And since God is right where we are, the whole of God is also right where we are. And to train ourselves to make our daily moment by moment choice from wholeness rather than any separation. We have to access the meaning of the statement by Jesus that said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. You know, when Jesus said that in my father's house, there are many mansions, I go to prepare a place for you. He was always telling us already in the mind of God, there's an infinite, infinite, infinite good. It already exists. It's happening already. And I go to prepare a place for you. In other words, this presence is already there. It's never leaving us. And so when we choose from wholeness, we are accessing the dimension that is already complete and allowing it to manifest in and as our life. You know, there's a story of uh, medicine in China where a patient had inoperable tumors and three people, I guess you would call healers, hovered around the patient. And they simply said, already done. Already done, over and over. And in two minutes and 40 seconds, the tumor disappeared. There's no logical explanation for this. There's no science to back this up. But they had come into an agreement between the three of them. There was a dimension where the possibility of healing already existed. A dimension where the cancer did not exist in the mind of God. And they lifted their vibration. vibration. They claimed it. And it was so. In two minutes and 40 seconds, which really indicated that it didn't exist in the mind of God from the beginning. And that which does not exist in the mind of God, it disappeared because it was just an appearance. It was just, it was not a reality. It was a fact, but not the ultimate truth. So when we make a decision from wholeness rather than make a decision that something is wrong and I got to go fix it. Understand we've been trained to, to be good problem solvers and have a world view with something is wrong with the world. And some level we've been trained and conditioned to believe there's something wrong with the world. There's something wrong with my life. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong out there. And there are plenty of facts to seemingly back that up. But the whole premise is we're out there trying to right the wrong or protect ourselves from bad that's out there. When we make a choice, from wholeness is based upon a different paradigm. It's a different perception. If we have the old perception, we end up manifesting and creating blocks and problems and hindrances because our opinion is that there's something wrong and we can never outrun our own opinion of ourselves and the world that we're living in. Yet when we choose from wholeness, that is something that there's something right in God's world. There's something wonderful that's happening. We're saying I live and move and have my beingness in God. When we're interested in that, then we're accessing the many dimensions of higher possibility. Anita Mujani, as I'm talking a lot about this, I'm reading that book this week. 
She was focused on the belief there was something wrong most of her life and she needed to fix it. But she said the healing happened when she allowed her true spirit to shine through and she became interested in that. So we want to understand. We get and we manifest what we're keenly interested in. And if we're more interested in lack rather than sharing, then that will manifest as experiences of lack and limitation and fear and doubt and worry and crime and all the things we read about the, in the news or on the internet. But when we become more interested in love, more interested in sharing, more interested in God's will for our life, we will find ourselves being a shining example of individuals living in heaven, which is here and now. So we have time, sometimes we have to come out from among them, the crowd, and tune in with infinite possibilities where accidents do not happen into our experience. So the question is today, what are you interested in? What are you really interested in? And when you choose from wholeness, you are interested in the will of God, the beauty of God, the joy of God. And we'll become so supremely interested in that which is real because that's what's enduring and eternal. Then that which is not real begins to disappear just as it appeared. Just as that tumor disappeared with that person in China because it was an appearance of a false idea that is not everlasting. An idea of disease and lack. It does not exist in the mind of God. So as we choose from hold, we want to rejoice in God, develop an inner discipline, a discipline to choose from wholeness, to focus on wholeness, which allows us to be the creative beings, the co-creative expressions of God we are meant to be. And so when we become still, when we become certain that right here, right now, is all the life, all the power, all the presence that we're choosing from a divine consciousness that's undivided, the image and likeness of God, not the experience, not choosing from a divine consciousness that is less than that, and allows us to let go of the old and for the ordinary way we look at things to be rolled up and dissolved. And the supreme love of God begins to take over our life right in this instant. Understand here, just as that village chief reminded me and what Anita Morjani realized in her near-death experience, there is no time or space in God. The moment we access this timeless dimension through our proper choosing, in that instant, not in the future, the resurrecting, healing, and rejuvenation has begun right here. So that means this. In your hands is your own prognosis for your life. You know, there may be doctors and lawyers. They may have a diagnosis of your situation. They may say, this is what's happening in your experience and this is what may happen. But you have the key to your own prognosis. We have the key to our own prognosis because in the mind of God, we're free. We're healed already. We're whole. The prognosis is already out. You are a child of God. You get to access God's prognosis by choosing from wholeness, by proclaiming the ground which you are standing is holy right now. And this is true even in the midst of COVID-19. We are in tune with reality when we turn our attention to that, that there's nothing wrong in God's kingdom. There appears to be something wrong, but reality, there's nothing wrong. We just have to see it. So we come together to celebrate so our octave is lifted. We see with the divine spiritual insight, the wholeness that is happening right here and right now. So we wake up and pray from wholeness. We vision from wholeness. We choose from wholeness. And then we watch as our old seemingly upside down world is turned right side up again. Because in the mind of God, you're healed already. You're complete. Our planet is complete now, regardless of what the external circumstances may say. And we can do this. 
It's very practical. So we think now about a place in your life or in the life of the planet where there seems to be some kind of disharmony. And now we choose to think from wholeness, not trying to overcome a problem. We're trying to know God, which is always a big difference. We're trying to feel our way to our center, back to God, back to our true nature. Love that you are the peace that you are now. And then notice that there is nothing to fight there. There's nothing to prove there. We get There's nothing to get rid of there. What we're doing is doing what God is, wants to be expressed through us. And that is to know God and manifest God. To know God, manifest God. And we're coming to the understanding that God and God qualities in our life moment by moment. So the verdict is in. You're not guilty. You're free. The prognosis is in. You're whole, perfect, and complete. The report card is in. You are not a failure. We are not failures. We are the image and likeness of God. And so we celebrate God's life as us. Rejoice in that in this instant. Be free and choose from wholeness. Peace and blessings to you. I want to thank you for tuning in and being part of today's online celebration service. As all of us continue to navigate through the COVID-19 experience, we want to remember that we are always whole. We are always complete whenever we see the unlimited dimension of who we are. We'd like to express a special thanks without ceasing to our SLC staff, the AV team, particularly Ira and Cameron, who does the Wednesday service. Paula, who selects the music, and Reverend Deborah, who does the meditation. And Celia from Martin Roots Marketing, who helps with our marketing efforts. And all those who have worked behind the scenes to make this online experience happen. Right now, you have an opportunity to support us in providing these spiritual experiences, not just what happens on Sunday but also on Wednesday evenings, the WOW program, the prayer and meditation opportunities, and other experiences that take place throughout the week. So I invite you at this moment to support Spiritual Life Center with your donation and give what you can. It makes a difference and is very much appreciated. You can give by texting SLC Love to 443-321, that's SLC Love to 443-321, or go to our website, slcworld.org, and click the Donate tab to give in other ways, including by mail. And with that, I invite you to join in and say our offertory blessing together. Divine love, through me, bless and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. Thank you, God.
in the victory that is already ours this very day. I choose joy. I never let the problems keep me down. I know God's working on things out for my good. I choose joy. Well, there's a power deep within my being And it commands my soul to stop praising the Lord with every breath So when I find myself under a load of circumstance and care Joy wants to know what I'm doing That last note kind of reminded me of Minnie Rippet, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that high note there, that was, that was awesome. Well, we bless the tithes and offerings, knowing that they're blessed to givers and receivers, all levels of their being. As we go forth, being the instruments of peace and joy and all that is good and perfect, because this is why we are here, to let God be God in us. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. And with that, let us join together and sing our peace song.
spiritual